Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to talk to you about plastic. Um, talking about recycling and plastic and waste is probably my favorite thing that I talk about on the channel. It's just super fascinating to me. This video was inspired by a lot of people having questions specifically on TikTok about why certain types of plastic are not recyclable. Isn't all plastic recyclable? So we're gonna be diving into the seven types of plastics today, which ones are most commonly accepted, which ones probably are not accepted. But as always, be sure to check your local recycling facility for region specific recycling rules. If you would rather read along or you are hard of hearing, the script is linked in the description if you would like to use that. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I talk about all sorts of things, zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. And don't forget to hit the bell for post notifications. It's a common misconception that just because something is plastic means that it's recyclable. And the thing that I say, technically yes, all plastic is recyclable, but not all plastic is recycled because recycling is a market. If there is a demand for one of these types of plastics, it will probably be recycled. But if there's not a demand or it takes too much money, too much effort, it probably won't be recycled. The downside is that the oil industry is heavily subsidized, meaning that the extraction of new oil and the creation of brand new plastic is cheaper than recycling plastic into a new plastic product. Of course, if it were truly in the name of the earth, we would be recycling everything, but that's not always the case because many people are focused on profits alone. They don't really care about the destruction of the environment. So of course it can get really costly and not to mention it can be really difficult to recycle some of these types of plastics. So we're gonna dive into what are these different kinds of plastics, how to find out what number your plastic is, and if you should be recycling it in your curbside bin or not. So first, what are the seven types of plastics? The first one is polyethylene terephthalate. Number two is high density polyethylene. Number three, polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Number four is low density polyethylene. Five is polypropylene. Six, polystyrene, also known as styrofoam. And number seven is all other resins. So first, number one, probably the most commonly type of plastic, and that is polyethylene terephthalate. <laughs> so how do you find out what number plastic you are looking at? You pretty much take whatever plastic vessel you have, flip it upside down, and there's a number on the bottom. Sometimes it's a number, but also sometimes it is the letter symbol. I most commonly see the number, but I know in Japan, they prefer to use the letters. So sometimes you might see that as well, depending on your region or country, and also depending on the product. So for number one, you look for number one or PET or PETE. This is common items like water bottles, soda bottles, peanut butter tubs, and other food and drink packaging. It is almost always clear though sometimes colored. Think of like Mountain Dew bottles. It's clear but green at the same time. It is strong and lightweight which is why it's such a popular choice for food and drinks. PET was first synthesized in the 1940s and you can check out the history of plastic up here. PET is also the same type of plastic we see in our clothing and when it's used in clothing it's called polyester. The good news about plastic number Number one, PET, is that it is fully recyclable, which is really great considering it's probably the most used type of plastic. The downside to plastic though, and I talk about it more in this video, is that it can only be downcycled, meaning it can only be recycled one or two times, so it just gets smaller and smaller the more you recycle it and then eventually there's nothing left. Plastic is a great thing to turn into things like park benches and other things like that that have a long life as opposed to turning a plastic water bottle into another plastic water bottle. The recycling rate for PET is about 31% but when PET ends up in the landfill, it can leach toxins into our groundwater and soil. Next is plastic number two, which is high density polyethylene, also known as HDPE is literally just an acronym. Sometimes though, it's also seen as PE slash HD. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's high density plastic, meaning it's thicker than number one. So it is considerably stronger as well. This makes it a popular choice for household items like bleach, laundry detergent, dishwasher detergent, and so forth. They are commonly opaque, which means that you can't see through them. Again, think of laundry detergent bottles, but also sometimes they're kind of clear-ish because milk bottles are plastic number two and you can kind of see through them, but also kind of not. Generally speaking, it will never be as clear as plastic number one generally. But just because it's a thick plastic doesn't mean that it's not made to make thinner plastics. And what I mean is grocery bags are a plastic number two, but they are very flexible and not very durable. This is also a very popular choice of plastic among manufacturers. It's probably the second most common type of plastic to use. And that is because it has a higher resistance to heat. More good news, plastic number two is fully recyclable, but once again, it can never be recycled infinitely. It is downcycled each time. Because it is so thick and durable, it is more energy efficient to recycle HDPE than it is to create brand new HDPE. It takes about 1.75 kilograms of oil to make just one kilogram of HDPE. So recycling plastics number two is of utmost importance. Of course, we should be recycling all types of plastic, but if you had to choose one, it's probably plastic number two 
because it does save a lot of energy instead of creating brand new plastics number two. Once again, if you wanna see that something is a plastic number two, flip over your container and look inside the little recycling triangle. Plastic number three is polyvinyl chloride, also known as PV or PVC. This is a very common type of plastic to see in children's toys, cling wrap, school supplies like binders, as well as medical tubing. It used to be the most common type of plastic right behind plastic number one, PET, but it has since been discovered to have very bad health risks and environmental risks as well. So it's kind of dropped off the radar and not used very often anymore, though it still is widely used. Out of all the types of plastic, it is considered the most hazardous. So if you're avoiding plastic for health reasons, definitely avoid plastic number three. Like I mentioned earlier, all plastics are recyclable and that includes PVC. It is recyclable, though the process of recycling PVC is also very hazardous. It creates a lot of air pollution and in order to produce the best product after recycling, PVC can never be recycled with other types of plastic. This typically goes for all types of plastics. Generally speaking, plastics number one can only be recycled with plastics number one. Twos can only be recycled with twos, though they can be mixed, I guess. Um, they don't quite lose their structure as much as PVC does when recycling it with other plastics. So of course it's detrimental to recycle this, but it's just as bad to send PVC to the landfill because just like with the other types of plastics, the more it breaks down, the more it can leach into our groundwater and soil. But there are some companies in Europe that are trying to create better recycling initiatives for PVC. Moving on to plastic number four, which is low density polyethylene, also known as LDPE or PE slash LD. Does that sound familiar? It probably does because it is the cousin of plastic number two. Plastic number two is high density polyethylene. Plastic number four is low density polyethylene. It's generally thinner and more flexible than its cousins PET and HDPE. It is commonly seen as grocery store bags, bread bags, garbage bags, coffee cup lids, and other thin plastics. This plastic is generally considered safe for health reasons, but because it's so thin, it's very difficult to recycle or just not worth it to recycle. It can be recycled and when it does, it gets shredded into flakes and remelted into a new product. But here's the thing, because it's so thin, when it gets melted down, you have very little product to work with. So it really just isn't worth it money-wise to recycle a plastic bag and end up with this much plastic to use next time. So it's a really high energy process for not much return, meaning that Plastics number four are accepted, but they're not very commonly accepted. Plastic number five is polypropylene, also known as PP. To me, polypropylene and to experts, it's kind of in between HDPE and LDPE. It's often thinner than plastics that you would get your laundry detergent in, but often thicker than plastics that you would have like your grocery bags or your bread bags. It's still stiff and resistant to heat and used in a lot of food products. Think about like takeout containers, red solo cups, and things like that. It is also considered to be generally safe in terms of plastic, but it is also very hard to recycle. If you haven't caught on yet, the thinner the plastic is, the harder it is to recycle. Not necessarily the harder it is, but the less, um, the less bang for your buck you get when you're recycling it. This means that many municipalities are not equipped to accept plastics number five, though I believe they are the third most commonly accepted type of plastic after plastics one and two. So this means that if you want to recycle plastics number five, and that goes for plastics number three and four, if they are not accepted for you curbside, you have to seek out special programs for them to be recycled. There are programs through this company called TerraCycle, which I talk about in this video, what it is and how to use TerraCycle. Moving on to plastic number six, my least favorite. I mean, I hate all plastic, but plastic number six, the worst, that is polystyrene, also known as PS, also known as styrofoam. Chances are you've seen styrofoam in many forms, in packaging, as packing peanuts, as takeout containers, styrofoam cups and styrofoam plates that people use at cookouts, it's everywhere. They are essentially air puffed beads of plastic and they're all like melted and combined together. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it is great, it helps things from being broken when it's shipping and stuff. It works in regards to its purpose, but the recycling rate is very low, and it just creates microplastics. Those little beads get everywhere. It's also very risky health-wise being exposed to high heat. So like you never wanna put hot food inside styrofoam, never microwave it. And again, it is so difficult to recycle. Obviously all plastic is difficult to recycle or just not worth it money-wise, but I would say the least effective plastic when it comes to recycling is styrofoam. It needs special equipment in order to be broken down for reuse. It's also extremely bulky, but light. This means it requires like a huge recycling truck to collect all the styrofoam and it's transporting like 10 pounds of plastic. <laughs> like it's just not worth it fuel wise for the trucks. It's not worth it energy wise to be melted down when you're only left with a small amount of product to reuse. It's just overall a really terrible material in my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of you agree. And finally, 
Plastic number seven, other. So clear on what that means. It's literally any other type of plastic that is not encompassed in plastics one through six. But it includes two main types, polycarbonate, PC, and bisphenol A, also known as BPA. I'm sure everyone's heard of BPA. It's kind of an issue when it comes to health as well. Both are contained in a lot of plastic we use in our everyday lives and has been shown to have adverse health effects. Number sevens could also be bioplastics or combined types of plastics but bioplastics are recyclable, right? No, not really. I mean, yes and no, it's complicated. You can learn more about bioplastics and why bioplastics are great, but also harmful in a way in this video up here. If I'm out of cards, it's linked down below. But basically if a bioplastic number seven and a oil-based plastic number seven end up in the recycling bin, they're gonna be recycled together. But just like with, you know, plastics number one and two, they they technically can be recycled together, but you're not gonna get the best product if they're recycled together. So it's just really, really complicated to recycle plastics number seven because they are other. There are so many different types of plastic that fall into this category, making them very difficult to recycle. How many times have I said that in this video? <laughs> so what do these types of plastics have in common? All plastics are made from oil. And if that is the first time you're hearing this, again, I highly encourage you to check out my video on the history of plastic. They are all very similarly related. Think of them as cousins, but they all vary depending on their compounds or monomers. They also all pose health risks in one form or another. No form of plastic is great for us to consume our food and drinks out of, as well as they create microplastics in the environment. There is microplastics in our food and in our water now. But if you're looking for a safer form of plastic, you should opt for PET, HDPE and PP, which are numbers one, two, and five. Coincidentally, these are also the most commonly types of plastic accepted for recycling. So which plastics should I recycle? Which plastics should you recycle? Generally speaking, again, plastics one, two, and five are widely accepted. In Las Vegas though, we can only recycle plastics one and two. So it is really important that you check with your local recycling facility, give them a call, give them an email, but how do I find out how to contact them? I don't know about you, but I have a sticker on top of my recycling bin, which has their contact info as well as our recycling rules on top. If you can't find that, just type in your city recycling facility. So I would type in Las Vegas recycling facility and hopefully a number or an email pops up where I can call them and ask, hey, what types of plastic do you accept here in Las Vegas? And they can tell me. I don't think I mentioned it yet, but if you are still not sure that you're recycling correctly or not, I have two videos I would really like you to check out. First off, is wish cycling, what is wish cycling, and why we're all probably recycling incorrectly. Again, if I'm out of cards, it will be linked down below. And number two, why we should recycle correctly, the importance of recycling correctly, and also the importance of supporting the recycling system. And what that means is, if you're looking for a new pair of shoes, a new, mm, I don't know, phone case, something like that, and you want a plastic option, opt for an option that uses recycled plastic. That is because the more that we buy these recycled plastic and other material options, the more likely that those prices will increase for recycling. Meaning that if we as consumers show that we love you supporting recycled plastic, more plastic will get recycled because it will in turn end up being more profitable for companies instead of making plastic from brand new. I hope that makes sense, but again, and I break that down more in those two videos linked above and below. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this helpful. I sure learned a lot just researching for this video. If you found it helpful at all, I would really appreciate a thumbs up as well as sharing this with others, as well as those other two videos about wish cycling and why we should recycle correctly because our recycling system is super flawed and it's not our fault as consumers, but we should be doing our part to make these systems as best as we can, as good as we can. I don't know, <laughs> did that make sense? So feel free to share this video or just bring it up talking to your friends and family members, coworkers and things like that. And again, if you have any more questions about plastic, please leave them down below because I love talking about recycling. Recycling is so fascinating to me. And if you have more questions, I'd love to address them in a future video. But that's all that I have for today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching along and coming along with me to learn this stuff. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. The main plastic types are polyethylene, terra, terephthalene, terephthalene, phthalate, terephthalate. <laughs> Probably not gonna be pronouncing these correct. Correct. Uh, and that is polyethylene, polyethylene, terephthalate, terephthalate, terephthalate. I don't know. And when it's used in clothing, it is called, what is it called? <laughs> Polyester. <laughs> Duh. This is plastic items like water bottles, soda bottles. Ugh, I'm reading off the script. The next one, plastic two is high density polyethylene polyethylene and that is because it is has so recycling specifically number two is of utmost important op <laughs> uh, okie dokie hi sweetie
Oh, compounds monomers. Opt for a <laughs> opt for an option that uses recycled plastic. That's it. But that's all that I have for day. Ugh. Lots of bloopers for this one. Te and have.